Hey there guys, welcome back to another exciting battle report brought to you by Gaming Grots. Today we're going to be battling it out in the battle plan, Position Over Power. In today's unique mission, there is the Lost in the Landslide unique parameter. So at the start of the fourth battle round, the flank objectives are removed from play. So the ones that you don't see in any enemy uh, or friendly deployment zone. And then this one has a unique scoring, slightly unique scoring system in it as well. You have the score one, score two, score more as normal. But then you can also get a bonus victory point if a Galatian champion is securing one of the flank objectives in those first few turns. So a chance to get ahead on some points or maybe to come back on points if you're down on objectives potentially. Today we're gonna to be battling out in our another Gurish landscape. We've got the Realm Gate, which has brought us all here today fighting over these awesome objectives in our Gurish landscape with lots of ruins and rocks. All right, let's take a look at those armies. Hey there guys, Patrick here. My turn to be taking out the Stormcast Eternals. Uh, again, I'm gonna be running Scions of the Storm, Army Faction, Knights Excelsior to make those Paladins battle line. And then the grand strategy is take what's theirs. Uh, Triumph today is inspired, but I don't think we're gonna get it because we are max points. Uh, for leaders today, we've got the Lord Imperative. He's taking the artifact, the Arcane Tome because he's bringing alongside him, as you can see, the Incarnate of Gur. And now that Jesse's running the Stormcast last time, they were able to defeat the Incarnate. I thought it fitting that he joined their ranks and they were able to bring him under their control. Then we have, he has the Aspect of the Champion Tunnelmaster. And then I've got my Lord Relictor General, who has the Command Trait High Priest and the Prayer Translocation. And then for Battle Line, we've got six Annihilators with the Shields, and then three Annihilators with the Grand Hammers and then a unit of five Liberators just to squeeze those guys in there. And they're taking the weapon and shield. And then as I said before, we've got the Cron Spine. And then lastly, we've got the six Vanguard Raptors unit um, with the long strike crossbows. Uh, and that is again, 2000 points exactly. And that's gonna fit nicely into a one drop for us. Um, so we'll have control hopefully of priority because I think with our kind of much smaller model count, it's really important for this kind of list. Uh, but hoping um, we can get some more usage out of the Incarnate this time and get more than one turn out of them. But we'll have to see how it goes and what Jesse has for us to go, go against today. Let's take a look at his army. Hey guys, Jesse here bringing back a Disciples of Zeech list. Um, so going with Guild of Summoners as my sub-faction. Got the grand strategy Master of Destiny, so having to have uh, nine or more combined, uh, a combined count in my Fate Dice pool. Uh, for my Triumph, I've actually taken Indomitable, so getting to pass a Braver if I need to. I feel like it's going to come in handy more than a plus one to wound with this army, since nothing really is that fighty and really requires to get that. Um, so going over the actual list, uh, starting with, I've got Bellicor, uh, Kairos, I've got a th Ogroid a Thermaturge, and he's actually going to be rocking the Tusk Helm and the spell Infusion Arcanum with the aspect Tunnel Master. So really cool tech I saw online actually. Basically getting Tunnel Master him and then guaranteeing a charge with Fate Dice and then using Tusk's Helm to do mortal wounds on the charge. And then Fusion Arcanum basically gives him twos to hit, twos to wound. So just a, a missile practically. Um, I've also got a Magister which is who is my general. He's the command trait Master of Magic so getting to re-roll uh, one of his casting rolls. Uh, he's taking the spell, Shield of Fate, kind of cool that he can basically go to cast an additional spell if he wants, and he doubles, he dies, but since I have Fate Dice, you can kind of guarantee or get a reroll with the Master of Magic trait. Uh, for Battle Line, I've got two units of ten Pink Horrors, a uh, unit of ten Karak Acolytes, and then for Endless Spell, I've taken Chromatic Cogs, Umbral Spell Portal, and the Gnashing Jaws. Um, and that's all rounded out into 1945. I've got one battle regiment, so everything but Bellacor is in that, and then Bellacor on the side, so two drop. And that's my list for today. Alright, so here we are after deployment. Got the Lord Relictor standing beside the Incarnate. Then I've got my Raptors in the center here with the Lord Imperitum behind them. And then off to the far left, we've got our Liberators ready to go support the far objective. And our two units of Paladins up in the sky ready to come crashing down. And then over to the Forces of Chaos, we've got Bellacor with the Acolytes protecting him up front. Then we've got some pink horrors and the old right in the back. And then we've got Fate Weaver and some more pink horrors on Jesse's right side here. Kind of deployed back because he's taken into consideration just in case where those paladins might come crashing down. Um, and since I was the one drop, Jesse is a two drop. We do have uh, priority 
And I think we are going to be taking first turn here because it's trying to maximize and get ourselves on these objectives before the pink horrors do, and we have to remove those giant roadblocks. So with that, we're going to get into Stormcast, turn one, hero phase. All right, so battle tactic for Stormcast, turn one. We're going to be going for cunning maneuver on the far objective. And then with that, for our heroic action, we're going to go for a command point on the Lord Relictor. He gets it. We'll go for one on Bellacor. He gets it as well. And then for casting, we are within range of Bellacor to deny. Um, with the Lord Imperitant, he is going to try and throw a Mystic Shield on the Incarnate. Goes off with a nine. Um, or does Jesse want the free summoning point? I'll take the summoning point. I figured, yeah. Probably the only one time I'm going to be casting, but I think it might help the Incarnate if he gets to go do what we want him to do. Um, that's it for casting. And then for prayer, we are going to try and translocate um, with the Lord Relictor. Let's see if we can get it off on a 2+. plus. He does not, but he has the command trait to reroll um, his prayer rolls. So it is going to go off. So we are going to get translocate on the Raptors. And I'm pretty sure... They're going to end up about over here, because I think they're going to try and take out Mr. Fate Weaver if they can get super lucky. Um, and with that, we're going to get into the movement phase, and I'll show you where these guys end up, because they do get the chance to move afterwards, but I don't think they're going to need to move. We're going to probably translocate them exactly where we need them. Uh, so that's going to be it for the hero phase. We'll get into Stormcast, turn one, movement phase. Alright, so into the movement phase, my Lord Imperitant uses Tunnel Master to tow um, just within six of the objective, make sure we get that and get our cunning maneuver. And then the Liberator's advance coming over here again, making sure they were within range so he can't be shot at. And then moving over, the Incarnate moved right up, actually ended up deciding to teleport uh, the Raptors over here so they'd be within range of the Lord Relictor. And we still have a, a beat on Fate Weaver over here and can try and take a shot and get rid of him nice and early because he is super annoying and as Lord Relictor using his auto advance 6 to again make sure he toes the far objective here and then using the Lord Imperitance guiding from the storms bringing down our first unit of paladins um, just outside of 7 instead of 9 and then so we get to see if their mortal wounds get to go off here on starting with the Acolytes uh, so nothing on the Acolytes the pink horrors whoop, goes off for d3 so three mortal wounds into the horrors. Kay. They don't have a ward save, right? Don't think so. No. Well, you keep going. And then Bellacor does not hit Bellacor. <laughs> kind of sloppy display on that yeah, part. It's all right. I guess we we'll start with some horrors somewhere. Um, and with that, we're going to go right into shooting. Just going to have the Raptors, because Lord Imperitant's nowhere near anybody with his wand attack. Uh, so all the uh, Raptors are going to be going down into Fate Weaver, and we're going to get those guys all out attacks. So we're going to be hitting on two. I uh, will really use all the defense. Why not? You got it. Just two mortals so far, and twos. So that is four eight saves minus two for Fate Weaver. <laughs> All right. So, I uh, said eight saves. Yep, minus two. All right, so just minus one. So, back up to fives. Can't complain with that. That's really good. Goal. And these are two damage each? Yep. And then he took two mortals as well. So, two mortals. Uh, so, he's taking ten damage. Oh, so eight damage, right? Because three got through plus two mortals, right? Uh, four got through. Oh, four got through. Okay, yeah. Ten damage. He's got 16 now, right? I believe so. Yeah. So, he's getting there. Getting some work on him. Um, and then with that, we're going to go right into some charges. So, we're going to start with the Incarnate. So, he's looking for a six here. Oh, that's gacked. Oh, that's <laughs> definitely a fail. He's going to grab two new dice because he gets to re-roll. Oh. oh, and uh, I don't think he's going to make a uh, seven. He's just going to make it in there. Just enough on the acolytes. Yep. And then, um, so yeah, he's going to end up right about here. And then I'm going to go quickly with the paladins. Uh, these guys, again, needing a seven, and they have the re-roll since they just came in. <laughs> no. Ooh, that's a fail. Hopefully with re-rolls. 
There we go. Seven just enough, just enough <laughs> again. And they're going to get to roll those seven dice here. Uh, so we're going to see where these guys end up because I'm going to try and see where I can try and best put that. I know I can't go into Bellacourt, but I'll see if I can maybe get it into the Acolytes instead of the Horrors here. So we'll see where these guys end up. All right, so just seeing where those Paladins and the Incarnate were going to end up here. Incarnate would have finished his move first, and then the Paladins would have moved here. And then so their charge effect would have taken um, taken into effect now. Uh, so every four plus here is going to be a Mortal Wound, and this is going to go into the Acolytes here. We got three Mortal Wounds, but these guys do have a Ward save. Six up. No. no. So three Acolytes gone. Um, and then for monstrous actions for the incarnate, we are going to, um, I guess he's just going to stomp into these acolytes here. No, he doesn't. Okay. And we would be in range for Bellacor, I think, because right. any of them that are within three inches. Um, so can't go can for the roar. stomp, but roar would be, yeah, I guess I'll just roar because I can stop that. Nope, nope, so no roar. Um, and then with that, we can go right into combat phase. So we are going to pile on these paladins and see how many we can get into these acolytes and horrors. All right, so after piling with the paladins, and they're two inch reach, you can get two of the uh, paladins here into the acolytes. Um, so it's going to be the champion and one other, and we're going to use the knight's excelsior bonus here to give them plus one to hit and wound. Um, so that way we still have a command point if we need to for these guys. Um, so going with the two first, and then the other, sorry, the other last paladin is going to be going into horrors. He doesn't we'll have use, reach. Uh, I'll have defense on the acolytes just so we can get a six up, six up. You got it. I mean, yeah, against three damage rabbits, every six is going to be big. Uh, so hitting on twos, so I'll hit. And wounding on twos is two, two misses. So that's five saves, negative two. All right, six saves. Sorry. Stop one. So that is 12 damage. All right. They're smashed. <laughs> we got a six up war. Let's People see. People wonder why I did that because I have the incarnate there. So I wanted to get this those guys out of the way so then the incarnate has a chance to pile in and he can do even more damage to some to some horrors here. I think you got them because that's three, six. Yep. So you would have 10 in total. Yep, yeah, because you saved three wards there. All right, that's all right. And that is going to go to Chaos's chance. I don't get to swing with the other hammer. Oh, right, right, right. Because I, I do have one other hammer here. Uh, yeah, because you'll be able to split and split again here. So this one is not plus one to hit because the Knight's Excelsior bonus is against the one target unit. Uh, so two hits and two wounds minus two into the orders. Uh, so I got a five up save. So, so it's good. just six damage. Okay. Mm. But I want to take the okay. banner. Um, is it worth it though? All right, we'll let Jesse yeah, split split this. again <laughs> here because then I think he's also then going to be piling in with the horrors yeah. as best he can to maximize some punch back here. All right, so after all the splitting and piling in with the blues, Jesse's moved in to lock up the incarnate and stop him from piling in and getting at Bellacor, which is really up. not so good for the incarnate, but I guess he's just gonna punch into some horrors when he gets the chance. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's gonna be three blues going into the incarnate, and then everybody else that can is going to- Give us around 10 or something in there that I can. Yep. Uh, so fours and fours. Got it. Uh, what? One, three up. Oh, it takes and a And then three into the incarnate. Oh, sorry, that's too heavy. Uh, two. two. Got a three up with the Mystic. It takes one. Uh huh. There's a turn. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Not, not this turn. Yeah. No. Um, so that's it. So one damage into each of the units. We'll add that at the end of the phase here. And then it's going to be time for the Incarnate. I thought there's not even really a point probably to pile him in around here. So he's just going to pile in a little bit closer this way and snug up against that rock there and do his big punch. Uh, so start with his Vicious Claws. He's going to get eight attacks because he is still level two. Uh, so hit on threes. That's really good. And moving on to uh, threes. Uh, so four minus two. Straight through. So eight damage so far. Okay. And then three attacks with the fangs. On threes. And twos. Oh, oh, oh just one there. So that's four more damage because they're minus three. So 12 okay. damage so 12 far. 12 so far? Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, that's all of his attacks there. Okay. So that's going to be 12 damage into the horrors. Okay. Uh, so Jesse's going to take those guys away, and we'll show you what's left. All right, so after the horrors have been removed, we've started to get into the brims. 
and Balakora has piled in because it's his chance to swing back, and he's going to be going into the Paladins, and I guess I, I forgot he would have been coming in at us, so I am going to use all-out defense now on the, the Paladins, that, sorry, the Annihilators. Okay, using all-out attack, so twos and threes for the Blade of Shadows. Got it. Ooh. Ooh. Go last two, so that's six. six. Minus two. So, so minus one. Comes minus one, so four ups for these guys. Ooh, Whoa. Two damage each. Oh wow, that's ten damage. That's the squad. So they're going down, all of them. All right, so then we get to do um, possibly some mortal wounds back here. Making sure we get it right this time, so it isn't plus one of the roll, it's just an extra dice for the Thunderstrike armor. We derped that last time. Um, so it's all just going into the horrors. So on sixes, so just one mortal wound. Oh no. Into the horrors on their way out the door there. Alright, and those guys are vanquished by Bellacourt. Bellacourt usually doesn't respond that way. I guess he's been angry. He didn't like he killed his lately. alkalites. <laughs> yeah, no, he didn't like that at all. He likes his human worshippers. All right, so that is going to be it for the combat phase. Enough damage hasn't been done to the Incarnate to cause him to de-level, uh, so we don't need to roll for that. And the horrors aren't down to all brimstones yet, so they can't suffer from morale just yet. Um, so that is going to be it for turn one for Stormcast. We are going to get score one, score two, and score more from the far objective. And then our battle tactic as well for two points. And then we're also going to get a bonus point for having a Galatian champion on each flank. So this is going to be a seven point turn for Stormcast, which is going to be really awesome because these horrors just have to step onto these objectives to take them away from our smaller model count. But hopefully we've kept these guys locked up. The Incarnate's got all this locked up because you can't fall back when you're within range of the Incarnate here. Um, so at least we've got this all tied up. Jesse will be able to get his heroes out of there and hopefully stop, start supporting. And I'm guessing a lot of Mortal Wound spells are coming the Incarnate's way next turn to try and help de-level him. Um, with that, we'll get into Zeech turn one. All right, so turn one for Zeech. What's your battle tactic gonna be, Jesse? Uh, so we're going for Mass Conjuration. So um, basically, well, I just wanna do this before Patrick's able to kill Kairos because it's the only way that I could possibly do it. Uh, and I have to cast three spells, and they all have to go off on one wizard. So uh, I'm going to be trying to make sure I get that for sure. Awesome. Um, for heroic action, we're going to do a command point on Belcor. Gets it again. It. We're going to go for another unbind from the Relictor here. Okay. Um, so going into casting, we're going to go with the Magister first, since uh, he has a reroll, and we're going to use him to try and cast the Chromatic Cogs. So it goes off no problem with a plus one. Oh, so it's a nine, eh? Yeah. And that Cogs will let you reroll for everybody? Yeah, within 12. Let's try and stop that. Okay. Because maybe that'll mess up Mass Conjuration. Maybe. Yep. Maybe. Oh! oh stops him. feels it. The priest denies that spell. Okay. So no cogs, but that's going to be our only unbind because I've already made sure to measure with the Lord Imperitan, uh, and he was well out of range. That's why we went with that heroic action. Okay. Um, so let's do... All right, we're going to go with... Start with Spell Portal, I think, um, from Kairos. I'm pretty sure... He'll still have range to. I'm just gonna double check. So we put it there, and then a spell. So yeah, more than enough. We're giving that incarnate awfully close range, but he's just locked in, so hopefully he doesn't have to get eat it. <laughs> so let's go to the spell portal uh, from Kairos. Goes off on an 11. Yep. To do. Try and put that as far away from the. Yeah, I'm pretty sure as long as you don't put it within three, because he can monstrous action. Yep. Um, eat and the spells, so you don't want it that close. It's two summoning points so far. Um, let's go with his signature spell, I believe. Um, 
I just want to double check what the casting value is on it because if it's pretty high, I don't really want to go for it. Um, Do you still have your fake dice? That is true. Um, the thing is, it's too. I guess technically you can't stop it, but I, I kind of want to save some. I guess I might as well use it. Um, so we'll go with a just a five and a three. Uh, to ensure that it goes off. Okay. Because, yeah, you don't get to pick I don't one. think it gets to modify after you pick it. I gotcha. Um, I'm pretty sure it says when you pick fate dice, they cannot be modified any further. Um, so just kind of sacrificing the three, uh, make sure it goes off. Because uh, why not? Yep. All right, so who's that going into? Oh, yeah, right. That was the uh, signature spell. Right? Yeah, so nine dice into the archers for yep. sure. Yep, and raptors, you got it. This is any sixes or D three or Ooh, no? Yeah. The other one. Any three pluses is immortal. Oh, okay, gotcha. Nice. So we got three, five. Four, five. So it'll be two and a half of our archers going down here. It's okay. We'll do. Um, so that's two each down. So let's do Mystic Shield on himself. Got it. Goes off on a 10. 11. 11, 11, yeah. 11, yeah. So that's my Got battle your, tactic. Yep, battle that's tactic good. achieved. And there's his three spells. So you still have Bellacor and the Ogroid. Yes, because the magister failed. Uh, so for Bellacor, he's going to be trying to do Jaws. Uh-oh. Does not go off. Um, and then I guess he'll do his spell into the Incarnate. Yep. Uh, I don't think that goes off yeah, either. Yeah, his built-in, I believe, yeah, yeah. it is six. Let me double check. Yeah, double check here. Not, not the end of the world, I kind of just want it for fate points more than anything. Uh, uh, it is a six. Yeah. And yeah, he doesn't get any of the bonuses. To he does not get the plus one. True Z. Um, and then... So let's go with... Ogroid. Ogroid, I guess we just throw it into the Incarnate just to see if we can do some damage to it. Okay. Uh, it does go off. Okay. Uh, it's just going to do D6 mortal wounds. Okay. Uh, we'll it. For three. Three. Takes it. All right, that's it for casting. Uh, and then I just have to roll, see if the oh. banners get me an extra fate point there, which they do. Sweet. So I'll be up to six. Awesome. All right, so that's it for the hero phase for Zeech. Let's get into the movement phase. All right, so end of the movement phase for Zeech. The pink's moving up, getting ready to head towards the far objective. Fate Weaver moving over, ju over just so slightly. Stay near his endless spell. Ogride and the other uh, hero moving ever so slightly just to reposition. And then Bellacor flying over, getting ready to come pounce at the Raptors, who did a redeploy and got a nice three inches. So it is an eight inch charge for Bellacor. So I don't know. We'll see what they can do if they're going to make it. And then the Horror is still locked up because they can't pull away from the Incarnate. And with that, we're going to go into the shooting phase. The pinks don't have any shots because they're too far away. So all the blues and a couple of brims are going to be firing into the Incarnate. Uh, we'll use all that attack because why not? Got it. Uh, so four and four. Fours once again. Haha, uh -huh. take four. Damage. four. <laughs> On three, it still has the Mystic. So it takes one more damage. It's just increasing that chance. It's a small one, but it could happen. So it's got four damage on it this turn. And that's it for shooting. That will be it for shooting. All right, I think Bellacor is the only one charging. Yep. All right, let's see it. He's looking for that eight. Oh, he gets I saw the six first. It was looking good. Eleven. He is going places. He's gonna go slamming it into okay. both of them. Absolutely. And I think yeah, we absolutely have to unleash hell because probably the only chance these guys are gonna get to do some damage here. Uh, so everything we got into the course. So with the minus one, they're hitting on fours. So that is two mortal wounds, okay. and then on twos. So four saves minus, doesn't matter for Bellicor. So fours. 
Oh, oh with love style. So he just takes two mortal wounds as he comes charging in. That's it, that's all. All right, and that's going to be it for charges. So monstrous action for Bellacor. I think we'll go with a stomp into the bows. No, no stomp. No stomp. Um, and then for... Anyway, I don't think I have possibly any very close. Yeah, even with a pylon, I might not be able to. Um, so we'll go with the sword into the bows and then the rest of it into the squad leader. Into the squad leader? Okay. We'll slightly pile them this way. But Thank you. Yeah, we got to hope to get lucky and... Well, yeah, because he's closest to the okay. these guys, so he's got to just come slightly forward okay. as, as much as he can get. Um, is uh, with the all out defense on them. Um, we'll use uh, all out attack. Uh, no, it's not, because that was our last CP anyways, because we just right. deploy and unleash. So twos and threes. Ooh. Ooh. So six. Six. And then look for sixes. That. That's it for the Raptors. All right. And then the Fell Claw into the Ooh, character. Off the sword. Twos and threes. Goes off. Minus one. So fours. Oh. Two damage. And then the tail for two, which misses. Alright, so it's just taking the two damage so far. Alright. So, then I guess time for Mr. Incarnate. I'll try and maximize so he doesn't get any more scratches on him. So going with his claws, so he's got eight attacks hitting on threes. Oh. oh. Rolling like Bellacore usually does. Wounded on threes. Okay. That's better. So straight through. So yep. eight damage so far. And then three fangs. Oh, they all miss. Ew. All right. Incarnate. Not hitting as hard as he likes to. And then after Jesse does his split here, it's going to be time for the horrors to pile in and try and scratch up the Incarnate some more. All right. So after a split and pile in, time for the horrors punchback. Fours and fours. Doo, doo, doo. I did better than the, the shooting. Uh, I guess the same fours. Again. But with the amount of dice, yeah, definitely did better. Uh, so three up. He's good. He's fine. And then it is time for the Lord Relictor to punch back with his hammer. See if he can get some damage into Bellacor. Let's just double check that hammer here. Pretty sure four attacks. Yeah, three streaks. All right, come on, buddy. Ooh. So that's going to be three hits. And two wounds. Minus Fours. doesn't matter. Go Goes through, through for four damage. It's taking six. All right. And again, there's not going to be any morale because the raptors are completely wiped over here. And the horrors are not all the way down to brims yet. So that's going to be it for Zeech turn one. Uh, just he's not within range of this far objective to take this over with Bellacor. Um, so he's only going to have the one objective and his battle tactic for two points. So that'll be three points for Zeech this turn. And we're going to see who's going to take priority. Five. All right. We get the double turn, Zeech. Uh, I think we'll take the double turn. Absolutely. All right. So going into Zeech, turn two. Oh, really quickly, there was four damage on the Incarnate. So let's see if it, Jesse can get really lucky and D-level him. I, he is A-OK. -okay. He's fine. So he shrugs that off, and we'll get back to Zeech turn two. All right, so turn two for Zeech. What's your battle tactic going to be, Jesse? Uh, so we're doing for call for change, so summoning a lord of change. We're at six fate points. We only need three more casts to get nine. Um, so I think now's the time. Um, we're also going to get uh, a at start a roll a die and add it to my fate pool. So we get another six, Ooh. and then uh, three plus, get to add uh, a seven point from the banners, which we do, so up to seven. And then for heroic action, we'll do, um, I don't even know. <laughs> Let's heal. Uh, Bellacor? Yeah, or, 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 or yeah, fate yeah we'll feel, heal, heal Fate Weaver. Uh, uh, he does have a 10. Yeah. Um, D3 for, for one. Just the one, perfect. And we're going to do strike the opening so the Lord Relictor possibly gets a chance to do 
some punch here before getting taken out. Uh, so he's going to fight and get three hits and three wounds. Four up. Oh, six damage, but he does now have the strike blast effect on him. Um, so that is, is it one damage each or two, two damage each? So that's another six damage. So that's 12 on Bellacore. Boom. Almost got him because he's only 14, right? I think so. Double check, make sure you didn't kill him. <laughs> He's got uh, 14, you're yeah. correct. So yeah, almost had the chance. If we had a perfect roll there and got that extra one through, maybe. Um, that's it for our rogue action, so on to the casting. Uh, we're going to go with Kyrus' fate spell through the portal into him. Got it. See if we can save Bellicor. So it's off, off on a nine. nine. Uh, yep, so we're still out because you moved slightly away from the Imperitants. We have no unbinds. Nine, so nine dice. I am heavily bracketed. Uh, so it's going to do still... More than enough oh, yeah. to just obliterate with mind bullets the Lord Relictor. His faith did not save him this day. Almost, almost. <laughs> he almost just... I know, he almost got vengeance on Bellicor, so I'm I'm okay with it. Uh, let's go with uh, Mystic Shield on... I guess we'll go on the blues here, just to try and keep them alive as long as possible. Okay. Goes, Goes off on like a 9 again. So we got to get us to our 9 points here, just make sure I don't lose track. Uh, we're also going to go with... I guess that would have come from one of the other guys, right? Because just for the range... Oh yeah, I guess yeah, yeah. technically it would have yeah, yeah. to. Um, so I'll, we'll just say the Magister did that then. Okay. Um, I don't think he is range of anything else. I mean, I could start doing spells into him, but uh, I guess why not. So we'll do uh, Thermaturge's spell into the Incarnate, which doesn't go off. And then we'll do the Zeech Fire Storm into him as well. Okay. From Kairos. Uh, so it does go off. And the nine. So that one's nine dice. Any sixes? sixes. No, nope, nothing. Nothing. But still goes off and gets you your summoning point. Yep, so we're at ten. Yep, and then you still have Bellacor for two. Which I guess we might as well enfeeble him. Yep. Which, no. Nope. Bellacor says no. And then Arcane Bolt with Bellacor. Uh, I guess we might as well, right? Gets it off. Gets it off. So just up to eleven. Um, and then with that, I think we can go to the Zeech movement phase, which will be pretty quick, but definitely get a load of change out. Yep, that's not going to be good for us. All right, we're getting into Zeech, turn two, movement phase. All right, so into the movement phase for Zeech, the horror is advancing up again, trying to get closer to the far objective here on the far side. And then the, which is this guy again? Uh, Magister. Magister. He auto advanced six up into the center so we can get maximum range on summoning that Lord of Change. So Jesse's tagged and stolen my home objective. And then Bellacor just flying over here, uh, securing the far objective, sitting on his two wounds remaining. And then the heroes, the Ogroid and Fate Weaver repositioning over here on the far side, still staying close enough of the portal. But with that, we're gonna go into the shooting phase and it's just gonna be the horrors again, trying to mess up the incarnate. Yep, no all out of, not no all attack this time. Nope, so just on um, fives. Because we are lacking. Uh, Okay, got a couple. And, and four, one. So one. So he's still got the Mestex, so three. He's good. All right, with that, we'll go into charges, but I'm pretty sure Jesse is not charging with anything here. Nope, nothing. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll go to monstrous actions. I guess the Incarnate, he's going to stomp first. Goes off for one mortal wound. So he's going to get rid of one more horror here. Boom. And then I guess the horrors are going to pile in here and try and scratch up the incarnate. All right, so after piling in the horrors, how many attacks was it again, Jesse? Uh, 14. Yeah, something like 14, I think it was. Uh, fours. And fours. Much better than shooting. Well, there you go. Six. Six. No there way. Can't count. And still on the threes. So it's going to take 
one. So he will not degrade. So he's not going to degrade here. He cannot put just one wound on him. Um, that, he's going to go for his punches here. All right, come on, Incarnate. you got to break free here, buddy. Uh, so go with the claws, hit on threes. Wounded on threes. Uh, so that is four again. He's always getting four with the with his claws here. So eight damage so far. So two. And then the fangs on threes. So two hits. And wounds on twos. There we go. So there's another eight damage. So 16. 16 in total. All right. Count that Thank out you. and see what we got left here. All right. So that's what's left of the horrors finally from the incarnate. He's getting pretty close, but he's not all the way there yet. Um, with that, with the end of the turn for Zeech, um, auto passing yep. with the horrors, now that those guys can actually suffer morale to keep those bodies around and tie up that incarnate for another turn. Um, and with that, that is the end for Zeech. So they're gonna get score one, score two, score three slash more. So they're gonna get three points for objectives and then two points for his battle tactic for summoning the Lord of Change. So that is five points for Zeech this turn, bringing them up to eight. One point now over Stormcast as we go into Stormcast, turn two. Other thing I forgot to do previously in my turn before we get into Stormcast, turn two, Jesse was uh, able to let me uh, take back was, forgot to just pile in my Incarnate there, so I just wanted to get him a little closer so he can start working his way around if for some reason he starts whiffing here and get him closer to some endless spells. All right, so turn two for Stormcast. Our battle tactic is going to be eye for an eye, try and get some revenge. And then our heroic action is just going to be for, I guess, a command point um, on the Lord Imperitant here. And we can get two actions, but him and Hod, there's not really a second action here for him to do for the desperate action. Uh, so he's just really going to do the one here. So he gets the extra command point, and then for you, Jesse. Uh, I'm going to just try and heal Cairo some more. Sure. Gets it, 53. Three. three back, there he goes. All right, and then casting, I don't think we want to give you, all you can summon is the Lords of Change with this yeah. action, right? Um, and yeah. your next one's on 18? Um, next one's on 18, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I am gonna try and dispel my own endless spell, I think. Yep, cause yeah, as Jesse let me take this back, he wants to dispel it, so I don't eat it and See? level up. Uh, so Kyra's going for the Dispel, uh, he gets it, no gets problem. It. So no more mirror to eat. <laughs> and with that, that's going to be it, because I don't think there's anything really worth casting for these guys. Um, so yeah, we'll get into Stormcast, turn to movement phase. Alright, so under the movement phase, uh, the Annihilators, my last unit, came out of the skies within seven, just away from Kairos, and in between the pinks here. Gonna possibly get a few units here. Uh, Liberators moving over and around, ready to charge into the pinks. And then my Imper Lord Imperitan moving up, trying to body block them away from the objective. Really hoping if we can get our double turn here to maximize his bonus score um, for contesting the objective with a champion. And that we're gonna do the lightning as, and thunder as these guys come striking down. So see if Fate Weaver is gonna get hit. So on a three plus, he does for two mortal wounds. Okay. And then into the pinks, goes off for two mortal wounds. Good. And into magistrate, it does not go off. And then that we do still have one shooting attack because Lord Imperitan is going to shoot with his baton into the pinks. So he gets four shots. Grab some dice here quick. All right, four shots for him on threes. All hit. And wounding on threes. Three wounds, minus one. Is it a six up? Nope. One damage each. Okay, so that's gonna be five of uh, the pinks here. We'll do split shortly here. It's gonna split those guys up. because Jesse might be able to pull away more direction here, but I think either way, it's still about the equal distance here. Gonna be for the Liberators. Um, and with that, we're gonna go right into charges. So we're gonna let Jesse do his split here so we can see where those guys end up. All right, so here we are after the split, and we're gonna go into some charges, starting with the Annihilators, see where these guys can end up. They have the built-in reroll still, uh, and they're gonna need it. Two dice. Uh, need a seven. Ooh, that's a 12. That's gonna be really good, because they're gonna be able to loop around here 
and probably do their mortal wound output um, into the Ogroid. I'll have to do get Jesse to double check how many uh, wounds he is to see how likely that might be. Um, but really quickly, see if the Liberators are going to be joining the conflict. Uh, nope, they need a 7, uh, so they're going to use the free command point um, from the Lord of Puritan to reroll that. Uh, nope, still a 5, so they're not going to be making it in. But we're going to move these guys around and then see where they end up. All right, so here are the Annihilators after doing their charge in. Uh, we're actually going to put their charge bonus into Fate Weaver because Jesse reminded me that he has Mystic Shield on Fate Weaver, so hopefully help deal some damage here. If not, get lucky and get rid of them here. Uh, so looking for four pluses. That is three, four, five wounds into Fate Weaver. Okay. He's going to have three left there. Um, and then monstrous actions. I think we're just going to be doing a stomp over here with the incarnate, uh, which hits Ooh, and does one mortal wound into the ah, rim. <laughs> then Fate Weaver gets a chance. Uh, I think we're just going to try and roar ya. Yeah. Okay. Goes off. So they can't do any CP uh, for the combat phase. Um, with that, we're going to pile up with these guys and see where, where we can do some damage. All right, so after the shimmy, I'm uh, going to be putting five guys into Fate Weaver because we have to make sure we kill him to get this objective. And then one going into the Ogroid, who's going to do the all-out defense. Uh, we're using it on Fate Weaver. Yep, because he's going to then retain these guys only the minus one, and we can't do any bonuses. And then we're also minus one to hit against Fate Weaver here. Uh, so we're going to be hitting on fours, but we got to make sure, hopefully we can do this. Uh, let's go with Tyler. Only did six is a mortal wound. <laughs> only. Alright, decent amount of hits for fours, and then wounding on threes here. Ooh, only four and three ups. And it's got to fill two of these. Um, so how many, sorry? Four. E. I think we might use some fate dice to ensure. Yeah, so we'll use three fate dice. And then roll one. One three up. Two oh. fails. So he goes down to one health remaining. And he's going to retain that objective. All right. And then the last guy in the Ogroid, uh, he misses with everything. Um, so let's go. I mean, doesn't really matter. I guess we might as well go with these guys. Got orders, yeah, get the pile all So in. only four and getting in there. Okay, so eight attacks. Fours and fours. One. Ooh. Back to his four up. Oh, he takes one damage. I think that's all he's going to suffer this turn. But just in case. All right, his punch back. Might as well roll it because he has hasn't been performing the greatest. I think he should have gotten through those guys by now. Oh my goodness, oh, that's on three. He didn't like my hit. Yeah, into the horrors. Yeah. Oh, so no hits with the tusks. And then, um, or yeah, with his fangs, and then so his fa or sorry, with his tusks and claws, and now the fangs on fours. One hit. Straight through, yeah, straight through for four damage. <laughs> he's struggling. Yeah, he's really struggling. Wow. All right. Um, and that's going to be it for our punches, but both of these guys get to punch back into the Annihilators. Uh, so let's go with the Ogro. The right. threes and threes with the Great Horns. Nope. Nothing. <laughs> Hitting as well as the Incarnate. Uh, threes and threes for the staff. Uh, minus one. So going to the three up. Good. Uh, good. And then we've got four of the hoof attacks. Again, threes and threes. I'll go out on there. Two hits. Uh, one, no rend. Two plus. Hey, of you course. <laughs> uh, just one damage? Just one damage. Okay. And then we got Mr. Kairos, who's heavily degraded. Uh, so three attacks. Hitting on threes, wounding on sixes. Woo! Nope. 
And then five attacks. Hitting on fours, winning on threes. Uh, two. Minus one. Three ups. Fails one. Uh, two damage. So that will kill one of the annihilators there. And we'll see if he can do damage on his way out to the old ride. You might want Ooh, to I wanna actually, yeah, I, did, I wanna do that into Cairo, so am I saying? So I'm gonna put the damage over here instead. Uh, yeah, from this guy. Okay. Got a chance. Come on, six. No! <laughs> Alright, um, so that's it for combat. Um, these guys are going to be fine for morale because bravery 10. Um, and unfortunately, that, yeah, that means we don't get eye for an eye and we don't scoop up another objective here. So we're just going to get the hold one and the bonus point for doing it with a Galatian champion. Um, so that's two points for Stormcast and we'll roll for priority. Three. Three. I went ties. You went ties. I think Zeech is going to take it. I think so too. <laughs> All right, we're going to Zeech turn three, hero phase. All right, turn three for Zeech. What's your battle tactic going to be, Jesse? Um, so we're going to be doing Desecrate on the center, just super easy to grab. Yep. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. Um, I think for heroic action, we'll just do. I don't even, like I guess a command point since I only have the one or the two. So yeah, let's get a command point on the uh, thermoturge. Okay, that's it. Um, and I guess he's gonna go for a CP as well. Gets it. All right. Uh, for casting, uh, Carve's gonna try and go for. Uh, I guess I can't really go for chromatic cogs because then he can't go for jaws. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll do, uh, the Thormaturge will cast Cogs, Cogs. uh, yeah. which does go off, because he's a plus one. Yeah, is it a five or a six? I hate that we always have to cast it on, like, the exact number, because then I have to look it up. Um, let's see. Chromatic Cogs is... A six? Nope. So no. No cogs. All right. Uh, so let's go to Kairos. He's going to start with jaw, or uh, yeah, jaws. Which so that goes off. Goes off with a nine. Yep. Uh, try and stop that or let that one? Yeah, that's got to be the one we stop because that's going to wipe out those annihilators. Oh, he stops he it. He says no. Jaws. All right. All right. Let's go, Imperator. All right, well, let's go with his signature spell, then. This is going goes off on it nine again. Yep. So let's see. He is heavily degraded, though, so... Yeah, one moon left, so... It's going off on uh, sixes. <laughs> yep. So you got two mortal wounds. Okay. But none dead yet. Uh, so I'll just keep it die there. Spells only, um, and then I think we'll go with. I guess each is firestorm is the best bet. Um, so let's try that. Okay. Does yeah, go off. So again, nine dice. Nine. Any six is D three, which we don't get any. Ooh. Um, so that's it for Kairos. That's it for Kairos and the Theramters, actually. Um, so let's do. I think that's it for casting, actually. So then. You don't just, want Bellacore or. Uh, I guess he'll just cast Mystic Shield on himself, because I can't, actually. Yeah. Uh, we'll I guess just you can enfeeble. technically cast it on yourself, but you just don't get yeah, the benefits. Yeah, we'll just so try and enfeeble. Uh, I guess Mystic Shield and then enfeeble, so we'll do enfeeble yeah. first. Uh, uh, which goes off of the six. Um, and then Bellacore was going to try Mystic Shield just for some fate. Yep, so there's two more fate. Um, and then I guess we do have Mr. Lord of Change over there as well. Uh, so he's going to cast, he can't do a signature spell because it's the same as Kairos now. So he's going to try for Bolt of Change on the fire unit. On the balloons, you got it. Uh, goes off on a 13. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and then it says just D6 mortal wounds. 
for three. Three. That's a gone lib. And then... And an extra lib. Uh, yeah, I think that's all he can do, really. And I guess you still have Arcane Bowl. I guess he'll charge one. Why not? Yeah. Goes off. do. That was the 13. You might be scathing. And then, sorry, before I do forget, uh, roll a roll die with Kairos to see if I get another fate, or get added to my pool. Yeah. Get a three, and then on a three plus pink horrors, add a summoning point, which they do not. All right. All right, so that's going to be it for hero phase. So we'll get into Zeech, turn three, movement phase. All right, so into the movement phase for Zeech, the horror is moving over. He's able to do redeploy um, with the Lord of Peritant. Jesse also did Tunnel Master with the Ogroid first over to this far corner here. So now I'm kind of more than within nine if this guy wants to end up charging him. Uh, the second Lord of Change moved over, securing the objective, staying on it, getting farther away from the Liberators, because again, now with one gone, um, not that they could have been equal to, but they have to kill him to get rid of him, and that's a tall order for four Liberators to try and push him off that objective. Magistrate staying near the terrain, making sure Jesse gets his battle tactic. And then we realized Jesse was about to move Fade Weaver, but he's wholly within range of the Incarnate there, so he cannot um, fall back. Uh, but the Ogre was outside of range, so he said it was okay for him to do the Tunnel Master. And then Bellacor, again, just staying ever so slightly near the objective there, making the Incarnate think he wants to go for it and try and get that level up. But with that, we're going to go into the shooting phase, and the Horrors are going to light up the Lord Imperitant and his Spirit Hound buddy. Yep, uh, five. We got, uh, sorry, four, five, six, seven. Seven saves for the oh, Lord of Peritant. No Ren, so on three ups. Stay in two. All right, right. got five left. Um, so we're going to go with charging. Start with the Ogroid. Thanks. Yeah, it should be like a six now, because I'm in three. Let's hope for something big. It's a six. We'll keep it. <laughs> Get it now. And then try with the pinks. Okay. No, Ooh, not, not quite. Enough. Do we use a reroll? Kinda wanna save it. Uh oh, great. it's got the potential. He does he hits pretty hard with the He also does uh, more wounds on the charge. Yep. Um Good. I think we'll we'll trust him to do it. It's not gonna reroll that, and that's nah. gonna be yeah, you're not charging with anybody else. Yeah, so just the six impacts here. Yep. Uh, so any four pluses. Oh, baby! So there's five. He is dead. He is skewered. And that is from the Tusk Helm Relic. Ooh. Go Relic. Yeah, good. good All right, value. and then you get um, Monstrous Action with Fate Weaver over here. I think we're going to try and go for a Stomp, just because you do have one that's injured. You got it. Gets it. Uh, for two. two, we'll slay the one, but he gets to go up into the skies. <laughs> you could kill him here. could kill him here. He does. He does the one mortal wound, um, which will slay him there, which is okay. actually, yeah, the guy just to the side there, because I'm pretty sure we still want to make sure we were totally objective there. But we'll see where those guys are removed, um, and that's going to be it for combat. Yeah. Uh, but still, I guess we have to double check the range there. All right, so we did double check the range there. So those guys are not e even within range with just the one wasn't enough because I forgot Jesse moved the magistrate. So we don't have enough to take that um, objective in his territory there. But finally going on to the final attempt, hopefully for this incarnate um, to get rid of these guys here. Not minus one this time. Not <laughs> minus one because Fate Weaver is finally gone. Let's get our trusty dice here. Come on, guys. Let's go, hitting on threes. Whoop. And wounding on threes. That is eight damage, like he likes to do. Finally, three yeah. of the brimstones. And with that, that's going to be it for Zeech turn three. They're going to get score one, score two, score more. Battle tactic for two points. 
and the bonus point for a Galatian champion, right? The yep. Ogre is a champion, right? Yep. Yeah, because he did the Tunnel Master. Uh, so again, for a bonus point, so that'll be six points for Zeech, uh, bringing them up to 14 over nine against Stormcast. And we'll get into Stormcast turn three. All right, so turn three for Stormcast, we're gonna start, our battle tactic is gonna be Desecrate Their Lands. Um, so again, going for same piece of terrain there in the center here, probably. I think, yeah, that's the play here, or it is the rock in the back here, but I'm pretty sure we're going for the center, go for that magistrate, possibly. Uh, but we're also gonna do a rally, because we don't have any heroic actions. Oh, we're not gonna get any Annihilators back, that's okay. If Jesse gets his heroic action, uh, I think we're going to go Finest Hour on the Lord of Change there. Cause yes, because he thinks something's coming for it. And he's possibly right, because the Incarnate is now wild now that his Bond brother is gone. Um, and then that's going to be it for Hero Phase for Stormcast. So we'll go right into the movement phase. Alright, so into the movement phase. Incarnate, now that he's wild, he can run and charge. So he came zipping over, ready to fight the Lord of Change and try and take back this objective in our territory. Liberator is moving over, trying to again, just hopefully either get lucky and kill the Ogroid um, and take back this objective for a turn for the point, or if they can't kill him, just as long as we can keep three bodies alive, uh, we can keep that around. And then the Annihilators, uh, just staying put, getting on the objective and getting us our battle tactic for desecrating their lands on the rock back there. And with that, we're going to go right into the charges. So the Incarnate, he's just going to make it, but... Pretty sure he's just in there. It was just outside of three. So it's four. Yep. So he is good. And he's going to come slamming in and finally get to fight one of his prime targets. He likes fighting monsters. Um, and then the Liberators, uh, they're absolutely going to get in there and surround the Ogre. So we're going to move those guys around and then we'll see some monstrous actions. All right. So Liberators are surrounding the Ogre. But we're going to go to the monstrous action and we're going to try and roar that Lord of Change. He is roared. All right, fine. We'll try to roar you. Actually, there's I no point. I can't even do, yeah. Uh, we'll Titanic duel. So you get plus one to hit, <laughs> yeah. sure. All right. Um, so with that, we're going to go with the Incarnate first. So he has minus one to hit, but plus one. So he's back to his regular. Uh, so going with his claws, still level two. I think I'm going to save all of defense. Well, he can't end this, right, because of the roar. So oh, yeah, yeah, right. On, <laughs> saving it for the old Can't do it anyways. Uh, so threes. Oh, he's mad. He's mad. He's mad he's fighting the horrors for too long. Uh, so that is five minus two. Six. Stop one. one. So eight damage. Okay. He always does that eight damage. Um, and then the uh, fangs. Uh, just one hit. Wounds on a two. Wounds minus three. Straight three, right? So, yeah, four damage. Okay. So 12 damage to him. Boom. Not too shabby. And then Jesse's going to be punching back with the Lord of Change because he wants to get that bonus from the Ogroid. Yeah. Uh, so staff is each. He's pretty damaged, so it's going to be threes and fours. Three hit. Two, so two, two, two minus one. So fives. Oh, both of them. Uh, two damage each. So four on them. Got the beak. Beak of beaks. Two. One. one. And that one is minus one as well. Five up. Yep. Two damage. So take six. There's a chance. All right, so time for the liberators. Let's see what they got. All right. We're doing combined. Oh, I guess, yeah, I gotta do champion with the grand weapon. So we'll use all of the. Defense on him. Yep, so we're gonna use all out attack for these guys. So everybody's hitting on twos, and then the red will wound on threes, the blacks on fours. They're the grand hammer, or grand weapon, which is a sword this time. So good for hit, and then threes on the red, and fours on black. That's uh, so two. So this is where we will separate because these ones are the two, two damage. So two minus one. So back to, back to fours. Even. Stops so, one. So that's two damage. Yep. And then three minus one, one damage it does. Uh, two stops now. No. So it takes five. And now that the Ogroid has been injured, he's going to get plus one to hit and wound. So 
Ouchie. All right. Time for the tusks. So let's do. Yeah, we'll do the staff first, actually. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'll just go down the line. Yeah, yeah. Two's and twos. Three. Okay, it's three. Minus one. Uh, yep. Yep. So plus one, minus one. They get the plus one because over half the unit is shields. So fours. Uh, and so that's D three damage. Each. Ooh. Oh, six. Oh. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four. Five. Uh, we got one moon left, so and we're not getting that objective for twos sure. Two's and twos. Uh, minus two on that one. Uh, five up. Three oh, damage. He is gone. Gord. Uh, but we will get the chance for them to up into the sky on him. Could kill him. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> need what one? Yeah, I think six, seven, eight. Oh no, you did five, he's got... Oh, sorry, I yeah. thought you meant you five plus the two. Oh no, no, yeah, we've done five damage to him, so we need three sixes here. There's two sixes! Oh, close. So he's got one wound left, and those liberators are gone. I'm not even going to get the chance to call for eight, I'd get a chance to bring these guys back, but I need my gi needed a character still alive. Um, and with that, that's going to be it for Stormcast, so we're going to fail to take that side, that's okay, we're on the two objectives that are still going to be in the game next turn. Um, we got to see if the Incarnate here is going to D-level. He has a chance. No. He is fine. Uh, so with that, we are going to not take this objective. We're still just going to hold uh, one objective. Uh, so one objective and two points for our battle tactic is going to be three points uh, for Stormcast, bringing us up to 12. So we're only down by two uh, at this point, and we're going to go into turn four priority. All right. Oh. Um. Oh. Two. <laughs> they like hit each other. Two. Two. Uh, uh, you win ties. I'll take it. All right, so we're going to go into Zeech, turn four. All right, so turn four for Zeech. What's your battle tactic going to be, Jesse? Uh, so we're doing eye for an eye, trying to kill the only option being the Annihilators. Yep. We, we talk about doing gaining, but then if my Lord of Change dies, which it probably is, I will not get it. So uh, we'll go for eye for an eye on the Annihilators. There. Got it. Uh, for heroic action. We're gonna do, we already did Finest Star on him. We'll do Finest Star on Bellacore. Sure, we're gonna try a rally on our Annihilators. Not no. Uh, Magister is going to try and cast the good old Jaws. Let's see it. Uh, goes off with a six. Oh, does, yeah, he doesn't give himself a plus one. He anymore. doesn't, no. That's gonna plop right in front, and wow. then move at the end of the hero phase. Um, we'll go. We won't know. I don't think he has to go for another spell, but we could technically. <laughs> uh, so let's go with Bellacore. He's going to uh, Arcane Bolt. Yeah, just get it stored. Uh, uh, nope. Fails. And then he'll just I guess Mystic Shield for a Fate Point. Why not? Get it. So we're up to nine, but we need another nine, so I don't know if we're going to get that. And I guess he can just try and blast and yeah. Maybe get lucky. Yep, we're gonna try and blast. Uh, so let's go with a bolt of change first. Sure. Uh, goes off on a seven, I think. It might be an eight. It might even be nine. Now that I think about it. Uh, it's a seven. So it just goes off for D6. D6. For one. One. And then we're also going to. Siege Firestorm. Yeah, I think the best one is gonna be. Yeah, let's go Treason of Siege just to make you minus one to hit. Actually, there's no point because you're already gonna be. Yeah, we'll we'll just do a uh, Firestorm. Yep. Stop. 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 Nine dice. Two sixes. Two sixes, two. D, two D3, so oh, it's cocked. Nice, so five, so it's got six on them so far. All right, and that's all the casts you can do, so up to 11 now on fate points. And then I think overrides out of range of everybody for his. Yeah, I mean, he's still cast is because he's got the infusion. Okay. Um, which will give him a uh, plus one to hit and wound, uh, which he gets. Okay. So just up to 12, and then Three plus, get one from the. No. Oh, so nothing thinks. And how far is the jaws moving? Whew. Oh, you're Ooh. lucky. 
It's only eight. But we'll go right here. Boop. So that's gonna kill. Oh, well, two, two plus. plus. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so four mortal wounds, killing one annihilator and one damage on the one. All right. So get into Zeech turn four movement phase. All right, end of the movement phase, Zeech forces trying to double back and get back towards the objectives. Bellicor, it's not, is he even in charge range? Cannot, he's still no. not in charge range because he's so degraded he has to Only get moves max. Eight. <laughs> Move max slow and steady. Um, but everybody else, uh, so charge only attempt is for the horrors. These guys are looking for a 12 yeah, here. Nothing else will do it. Nothing. Almost, but not quite. And with that, that's going to be it for charge phase because, yeah, you had no shooting attacks right there. The horrors are out of range. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. shooting attacks. Perfect. All right, so that can go right into monstrous actions. I think we're going to go for Titanic Duel. Good. So that way we will stay plus one to hit. Uh, we're going to just try and I guess Titanic Duel as well. All right. <laughs> Since I'm going to be hitting first. Uh, all right, so staff. Get four attacks. Fours. What are you on fours? Nothing. And beak on beak. Uh, just four. Threes. And fours. Two at minus one. Yep. Boom. 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 So that's three. four damage in total. Okay. So he's got ten on him so far. So it is a chance. But now his chance to get his first monster kill. So with the. Um, Titanic Duel will say the plus two minus one, so he's still plus two here. So hitting on twos. Oh, minus one because of uh, I'm Zeech. Yeah, so he's, yeah, he's plus one because of Wild, plus oh, yeah. one from Titanic Duel, and then minus one Zeech. So he's okay. still getting okay. one yeah. plus one here. Um, and then uh, wounding on threes. It's only three minus two. Six. Oh, so four damage. That'll do it. That'll get him. And with that, he's going to level up to level three. But then, since that's the end of combat, we're going to quickly see if he will de-level and stay right at two. Uh, nope, so he's just above by one. So he will go to level three and stay okay. there. Perfect. So we got level three incarnate. And with that, we're going to go to Stormcast turn four. But... Very quickly, um, Jesse's got one objective here. Um, he's not going to get his battle tactics, so it will be um, one point uh, for Zeech uh, after turn four. Hey guys, there. Sorry, quick edit. We forgot. Jesse ended up getting zero points last turn because I forgot because of the jaws is covering up my annihilators there. But we do have three annihilators on the objective, so it beats Jesse's uh, hero, who's only worth two. Um, so we, he does not secure any objectives after the Lord of Change got annihilated over here. So that's actually zero points for Lord of Change, or for Zeech on turn four. Um, but with that, we'll go right into Stormcast hero phase. Um, so we're going to go for gaining momentum. So we have to kill a unit and then have more objectives. So as long as we have um, one of the objectives here um, at the end of the turn, or both of the objectives still at the end of the turn, uh, we will get that battle tactic and hopefully try and catch up on some points. Um, but we have no heroes, so no heroic actions. Jesse gets his one and only heroic action. I think we're gonna try and heal, I don't even know if Bellacor is worth healing. I think we'll heal the, my ogre to ogre the general? Ogre. Not the general, but oh, right. yeah. Heals. He usually is my general. Gets two back, loves it. And I'm also gonna be Bell Bellacoring the incarnate. Yes, yeah, so we have to see if he can do anything in the following phases. But before that happens, how far does the Jaws move? Oh, yes. No whammies. Ooh, 13. So he's just going to so go. So that's exactly six, nine mortal wounds. And they have nine wounds. Oh, on a two plus, though. Oh, <laughs> always. Oh, oh, they're fine. Good thing we caught it this time. So he is, they are still standing, thankfully. That would have been just enough to wipe them. All right, and then so we'll go into hero phase or movement phase, and we'll see uh, right away if the incarnate can even move this turn. Oh, oh roll that! Yeah, <laughs> I'll roll it over there. No, uh, so he can. He can move. Yep. All right, so we'll get into Stormcast turn four movement phase. All right, so into the movement phase, incarnate's moving over. 
uh, still within six of the objective here. With him and Han, I don't think I'm even going to attempt charge him because I want to make sure he stays on this objective because even if I successfully don't get Bellacord and, I'm, and I am able to charge, I feel like that's when Bellacord is going to get the three plus and he won't be able to swing in the combat phase. Jesse running with his general, he got a nice five redeploy, so it's going to be a nine inch charge for the Annihilators here. So look for it. That's a nine. They're going to make it and come charging into him. All right, so Annihilator is trying to do their charge impact. See if we can just obliterate the Magistrate. Uh, I think we did this time. That's two, four, five, seven mortal wounds. Yes. <laughs> and he is just gone. So that will get us our battle tactic. Um, and we have score one, score two, and score more. So that is five points for Stormcast in turn four. Um, bringing us back into the lead, thankfully. Uh, so with that, we're going to go and roll for priority for turn five. Six. Six, your choice. So we will take our double, and this is going to be huge for us to get those objectives and then see if we can get one last battle tactic. All right, so turn five for Stormcast. Unfortunately, there's no battle tactics that I can achieve because I don't have any um, Galatian champions or the specific uh, keywords for to go for any of the Stormcast ones. Um, so with that, there's no battle tactic. Uh, we're going to try uh, to get, with our one and only command point, try and rally these guys. Oh, we actually are down to three, sorry. Ooh, yeah, we're going to get one Annihilator back. Um, I'm just going to try and heal my Thermaturge again. Yep. Yeah. Oh, loves it. It gets two more back. Um, but since we did take priority, again, for those who don't know, Bellacor, um, his curse is still active on uh, the Incarnate. So I think, again, we're just, we have to see if we can even get any value out of him this turn. Uh, but end of the hero phase. Let's see where the Jaws are going. Um, Jaws. He needs a 13. Oh, that's a 13 again. <laughs> Two plus. All right. Come on, don't fail me now. There no, it is. So again, is. nine mortal wounds, just enough. Oh, no, we got the yeah, fourth one the, back. You have an extra. So we have just the champion left now. Yeah. Good thing we rallied. All right. So we got the one annihilator left, and then can, we'll roll to see if even Bellacor will let the um, incarnate move in the movement phase real quick. Can he move? No. He cannot move. So he's staying put. We'll see where the Annihilator goes. All right, end of the movement phase. Uh, so we're going to just see the Annihilator going on a mad mission to try and see if he can smite Bellacor. Uh, so he needs an 11, though. Not and an he's going to fail. We only had the one uh, CP for going first, and we used it on the rally. So that's going to be it uh, this turn for Stormcast, but we still have both objectives. So we're going to get our score one, score two, score more. Uh, so we will get three points and increase our lead to 20. Um, and with that, we're going to go into Zeech, turn five. All right, so turn five for Zeech. We're talking him and Ha, so the game's really going to be coming down to if Jesse can get a charge off with the pinks into the Incarnate and get this objective, because we know he's going to be able to get his grand strategy, but he needs to kind of get max points in the turn um, to make sure he gets the win here. Because if he only can get one objective, which we know he can easily get there, he's just going to be moving Bellacor over. Uh, getting that and then getting his um, battle tactic uh, would give him three points uh, and then his grand strategy would tie us both at 20. So we're looking to see if we can get those extra points and get each that W here. Uh, so, Rook, so obviously my battle tactic would be Tides of Anarchy, which is basically need to take an objective with a unit of 10 or more. Yep. Um, also, and then we realize, yeah, he doesn't have enough casts to get He'll be one, po one. one point yeah. short of getting that uh, second order change. Doesn't really matter if this dies, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, exactly as well. Um, so yeah, so, so yeah, basically... So we'll go real quick to the movement and see where it get these guys set up for that charge. All right, really quickly, guys. As I said, Bellacor comes swooping over the auto six. Jaws move, ate the Annihilator, and the Horrors and the Ogre are moving up, ready to charge in and swoop on the objective. So let's see that charge from the Pinks. Wish we could have redeployed the... Incarnate, but not possible. Oh, Ooh, that's a 10. 10. They're absolutely going to make it in there. And then with the pile in, they're going to have enough to um, take the objective here. Because even if we punch to try and lower the numbers, we don't have enough We're just output. Make more. Yeah, to get lower, to get them down to only five horrors. And then he's just going to split more and more onto the objective, guaranteeing it. So with that, um, Jesse at the end of that turn would get score one, score two, score more and his uh, battle tactic for five points, bringing him up to 19. So at the end of five, the final score is 20 to 19 in favor of Stormcast. 
but Jesse is going to get his grand strategy for another three points, bringing the final score to 22 uh, over 20 in favor of Zeech. So, wow, this was really close. Uh, we thought about uh, we thought this game was kind of really over after two when I didn't get that double, and we kind of whiffed with the incarnate for a while, and then we didn't kill Fate Weaver, which cost us the tactic and the objective. So that was a that really brought us back that one turn. But turn four, we were able to come back um, and just had the good position after the objectives disappeared. So we were able to bounce back and stay in it with Stormcast, which was nice. The Incarnate finally kind of started doing something, but I think Jesse um, won against the Incarnate today because those horrors tying him up for three turns, they that was MVP stuff for them, just keeping this guy busy and away from monsters. And the big thing being Bellacor getting rid of those Annihilators turn one um, made it so he was able to get away. I thought I had, I forgot I had him locked up um, in that combat and I needed him to stay locked up so he wasn't able to retreat. So maybe if I used the six-man shield, he would have stayed locked up and would have been a different story on this side here. We would have held out uh, with the Raptors and the Relictor a little bit longer. Um, but that's the way the dice go sometimes, right? Uh, so yeah, thought it was a really fun game again. Always like taking out Stormcast, even though very small model count. These guys like especially love the Annihilators. They just hit so hard with three damage hammers. Um, and the Incarnate thought it was fluffy to bring this guy along after he was taken away from the Cities of Sigmar list the last week. So we'll see if maybe Zeech bring him out next time if they've kind of claimed his soul this time. Uh, but we hope you guys enjoyed uh, this battle report. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to all things so you guys can stay up to date on all things gaming grots. Uh, if you're ever in town, be sure to check out Game Night for an awesome gaming experience. And if you're looking for any used model hobbies, especially anybody out there, maybe in the new 10th edition, I know 40k, you're watching an AOS game, but maybe check out Thunder Games and Gifts, and those guys will absolutely take care of all your used model hobby needs. Um, and with that, thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you guys in another battle report. Have a good one.